One of the greatest pillars in Islam after the two testimonies of faith, or rather the most important practical pillar in Islam is Salah. It is the only act of worship that was legislated and mandated in the heavens when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on the famous journey of Al-Isra and Al-Mi'raj when he was taken to Jerusalem and then ascended to the heavens it was up there that Allah Azza wa Jal legislated Salah only to tell the Muslim Ummah how important this act of worship and this pillar is in the scale of Allah. It is the only act of worship that was made a criterion differentiating between belief and disbelief. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the differentiating factor between the person being a polytheist and a disbeliever and faith is him abandoning salah. And amongst all the prayers from the five daily prayers, one of the most important is Salatul Fajr, the dawn prayer. And you will notice in the texts following that there are many texts that speak about Salatul Fajr alone. And in other cases, it addresses more than salah, one Salah, Salatul Asr and Fajr, Salatul Isha and Fajr. But Salatul Fajr is always a common denominator in the text. Only to reflect its importance in Islam. As a matter of fact, it was a gauge through which the companions used to assess the person. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, whenever a person would frequently be missed in Salatul Fajr and Salatul Isha, we would start doubting him. Why? Because for them, no one missed out on Salat al-Fajr and Isha because it was a sign of hypocrisy. For them, it was a gauge to assess the person's faith and commitment to Islam. This is how important it is. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave in return abundant rewards for those who adhere to it all the time. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that adhering to Salatul Fajr is a protection against being thrown in the fire of hell. In the book of Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no one who continuously prays Salatul Fajr and Salatul Asr will ever be thrown in the fire. And the one who prays it is also promised to be admitted into Jannah, be deserving to be admitted into Jannah. In the book of Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever continuously prays Salatul Fajr and Salatul Asr will be admitted into Jannah. We face a lot of problems. We have a lot of enemies. The, the most vicious of all is Shaitan, as well as devils of humans, as we've spoken in different uh, incidents. The devils are from jinn and from humans. Shayateen ul insi wal jinn. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is also reported by Muslim, 
whoever prays Salatul Fajr will be under the protection of Allah. Imagine if the head of any state you live in sends you a message saying that if you do this, my intelligence, my police forces, my army, the special forces of the country will all be guarding you throughout the day. No one will be able to touch you. How secured would you feel? And to Allah belongs the loftiest of examples. When Allah is uh, the one who's protecting me and you, what sort of or type of reassurance would we have? And how secured would we feel? In the book of an Imam Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever prays Salatul Fajr in the masjid with the jama'ah, with the congregation, it would be recorded for him as if he has prayed Qiyam the entire night. The entire night is, you get that reward. And in a full night of Qiyamul Layl, for attending Salatul Fajr in the masjid. A very important note for the sisters here. Whenever there is a text addressing men about things that they do with regards to Salah, then women are rewarded more. Why is that? Because there is this reward for men. But we have a text in which the Prophet ﷺ tells women that their prayer in their home is higher in reward, is more rewarding. So they will get that and more because they adhered and prayed in their homes as instructed by the Prophet ﷺ. One of the uh, greatest rewards for any good deed a person can get is the following. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, was sitting with the companions one night and it was a full moon. He وسلم, addressed the companions saying, on the day of judgment, you will be enabled to see Allah And nothing will prevent you. Nothing will hinder your uh, vision. Just as you can clearly see this full moon. And then he gave them a means. Making them deserving of this great reward. So he said, So if you can avoid missing Salatul Fajr and Asr, then never miss it. Then never miss it. Al-Asfahani said, adhere to this, so you become deserving of seeing Allah Azza wa Jal on the Day of Judgment. Allahu Akbar. What a great reward. Subhanallah, it is astonishing how simple it is to attain some of these great rewards. And yet, how indifferent many people are with regards to this reward. You want to see how true this statement I'm saying is? When you walk to Salatul Fajr or drive, notice how empty the roads are. Then an hour later, only one hour after that, especially this time of the year, only an hour or maybe 45 minutes after that, when you walk out of your house, see how full the streets are for people going to work. 
Where were these people 45 minutes ago when Allah called them to salah and to success? You want to see how great the dilemma is? Look at this number and compare it to the number you saw this morning in Salatul Fajr. And you know why Muslims are in the state they're in now. We want victory from Allah. We want support from Allah. We want oppression to be lifted. And we're not helping ourselves. We're not willing to sacrifice half an hour sleep. Because literally people would wake up 30 minutes after that to get ready to go to work. What's 30 minutes? I conclude with this in the book of uh, Imam Ibn Majah. And it was classified as authentic by Al-Albani. The Prophet ﷺ said, Give glad tidings to those who frequently walk, walk during dark hours to the masjid. Referring to Salatul Fajr and Salatul Al-Isha. What is the glad tidings? They will get complete light on the Day of Judgment. This is referring to the light on the Sirat. That bridge, that thin, sharp bridge, as thin as a hair and sharp as a blade, where everyone has to pass in order to get to Jannah. And that is set up over Jahannam. وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Each of you has to pass over it, Jahannam, over this bridge. And I want you to visualize this. Thin, sharp, and pitch dark. No light. The only light you will get, me and you, is the light resulting from rewards. Now, during this critical moment, the, angel will be, the angels will be saying, Sallim, Sallim. Oh Allah, protect, oh Allah, protect, oh Allah, guard, so people wouldn't fall into the hell. Dangerous moment, decisive moment on the day of judgment. At that moment, complete light for those who maintained, adhered, guarded Salatul Fajr in Masajid, in the Masjid. Isn't this worth working for? When we used to study back at the early times when we were in the university, there were long sleepless nights studying, and especially when there's a midterm or a final exam. You would hardly sleep. Why? Because you want to pass and make a good grade and then graduate so you can work and get married and make money. Well, Jannah is much more deserving than a paper you will have thinking that it's a source of sustenance, whilst in fact it is Allah who provides. Just like all obligations that Allah mandated and commanded us to adhere to, Allah gives us incentives to motivate us, but at the same time He gives us warnings to scare us from falling short and weakening and giving in to our desires and the whispers of the devil. Of these warnings regarding Salatul Fajr, in the book of Al-Bukhari, 
the Prophet ﷺ one day was informing the companions of a dream he saw. And as you know, revelations to the Prophet ﷺ, wahi, one of the forms it came to him was through dreams. So he told them that I saw a dream. It's a long narration, but the part pertaining Salatul Fajr, he said, I saw a man standing, holding a rock, and another man lying down. And this man standing up would raise that big rock in his hand and smash the head of that person lying down and it would roll and then he would go pick it up by the time he returns to him his head is back to normal again and he would do that continuously continuously so I asked he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who's this man what is the sin of this man what's the problem of this man he was told, this is a person who used to abandon the mandatory salah and not act upon the Qur'an. A man who did not act upon the Qur'an and abandoned the mandatory salah. Ibn Battal, when explaining this hadith, said, this mandatory salah in this narration is referring to Salatul Fajr. He used to abandon sleep through. Rather, the, the text saying he used to, used to sleep through the mandatory salah. Now, this is going to be his punishment in the grave. From the time he is put in his grave until the day of resurrection. If we were threatened that someone would slap us on the face, just a slap on the face for a year, that would be severe punishment. Imagine someone's head being smashed continuously for Allah knows how many thousands of years to come. We don't know. That's for those who die now. Imagine those who died few hundred years ago and the Prophet ﷺ said I was sent me in the hour this close and he was sent more than 1400 years ago so we don't know when the hour is for someone to be punished this severe punishment until the day of judgment in his grave that's terrifying that's scary that's worth working against. Now this is in his, in his grave. In this dunya, he will be humiliated by the devil. In the book of Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ was informed about a man who slept in this, until the day broke. Sheikh Uthaymeen said, commenting on this term, this last part, until the day broke, he said, he missed Salatul Fajr. What did the Prophet ﷺ say about this man? He said, this is a person whom the devil urinated in his ear. You see how humiliating this is. How disgusting and disgraceful this is. And finally, it is a sign of hypocrisy as the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Muslim. He said, the heaviest two prayers for a hypocrite are Salatul Fajr and Salatul Isha. The heaviest on his heart, he feels burdened to pray these prayers. That's why Ibn Mas'ud, and this is also reported by Muslim, said, only a known hypocrite known to them with his conduct and behavior. Only a known hypocrite used to miss out these salas. There's nothing worth missing Salatul Fajr 
for absolutely nothing. Al Harith radiallahu anhu got married. And the following morning, he got ready and walked out of his house after his wedding night. Walked out of his house and went to the masjid to pray Salatul Jama'ah, Fajr. So some people said to him, you're newly wed, you just got married last night. You're leaving your wife and coming to, to the masjid. He said, by Allah, a woman for the sake of whom? The man would abandon Salat al-Fajr in Jama'ah is a source of evil. Now, let's pause and think. He's talking about one case, but staying out with guys, staying, out, staying up late on your computer or your smartphone, whatever the reason is, socializing, What's worse, missing out Salatul Fajr for? Nothing. And I'll conclude with this real life story that happened in one of the Muslim countries. A young boy, age six, seven, first grade, second grade. In the class, the teacher spoke about the virtues of Salah and the virtue of Salatul Jama'ah and particularly Salatul Fajr. So the boy longed to do that, but he was unfortunate because his father was not a praying person. So every morning he would wake up for Salatul Fajr and would start crying. Why? He can't walk out at this age, out of his house to go to, go to the masjid. His parents are sleeping. It's too dark outside. Dangerous for a child this, this young. And he would just sit at the window watching. Until one day, he noticed an old man going to the masjid and going back from the masjid, walking in front of their house. Passing by their house back and forth. So he decided to do something. Was very creative, unlike very many adults. He decided to sneak out of the house, follow this old man, without him noticing, because he was the grandfather of one of his friends, one of the neighbors. So he didn't want him to notice, so he wouldn't inform his parents, and thus they would prevent him from going to Salatul Fajr. So he would go sneak out when he sees him, walk behind him until he reached the masjid, would pray and then sneak again, sneak out, and walk behind him until he reached the house. He would just get into the house and the man would go on to his business. And this continued for a while and then suddenly, the man disappeared. This grandfather of his friend disappeared. So he asked and discovered that the man died. And he started crying so hard to the point that it attracted his father's attention. He said, son, this is neither a relative nor a close friend. Why are you crying so hard? He said, I wished you died and not him. So the father was shocked. This is a young child. Why would he say something like this? His feelings were hurt. His father deprives him daily from this. And this man who died was the means for him to realize these rewards he heard at class. He said, son, why? Why would you say such an evil thing about your father? So he told him the story. And it was a turning point for the father who started crying and pledged to be the one who would take his son daily to the masjid. Brothers, adhering to the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal is an honor. 
in itself. Plus, it is highly rewarding. And finally, it's a protection against the wrath and punishment of Allah. Salatul Fajr gives life and it illuminates the face. It brightens the heart and makes you feel joy starting your day by responding to the call of Allah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah. As-salatu khayru min al So let's hasten to success.